Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, glad to be here another morning, another Sunday to bring the word of God. Um, just thank you for tuning in, and we pray this will be a blessing to your life Amen. and others. Yes. Uh, first, we'll say a prayer. Uh, Father God, we give you honor, we give you praise, and we give you the glory because truly you are worthy. Who's like unto you, O Lord? And we thank you and ask that you continue to bless your people. They will get a full understanding of the word that you'll bring forth today. And that they will share it to others who, who know not you, Father. Amen. But we want to thank you and ask that you will continue to bless us. Have mercy upon us all. And we thank you through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we thank you. Amen. Amen. So, good morning. <clears throat> good morning. Uh, as we always say, we have another word from the Lord who continues to speak to his people. Amen. And praying that they will understand and realize God is showing so much mercy and grace to us because he clearly has to keep reminding us that he loves us and we need to come back to him. So today's message is the ravaging wolves have entered the church. So that really means, in essence, the wolves are loose in the church. Mm, my God. Which shouldn't be near the church, but they are. Mm. And the Lord is telling you they have to come out. Amen. All right, Sister Diane's going to start. Acts chapter 20, verses 28 and 30. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock, over thou over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he have purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. So, uh, Paul is already, this is Paul speaking, and he's already saying to the people, I recall that he was about to see them for the last time. Mm -hmm. And so, he said to them, take heed that basically you be careful, because once he leaves, the church is going to be on attack. Wow. And this is through the Holy Spirit, which gives overseer over the church. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit uh, gives leaders, he teaches them and, and have them ready to minister to the flock of Amen. people. Amen. So everyone has a responsibility that the Holy Ghost gives you. Wow, wow. And he's saying to the overseers of the church, feed the church of God. Yes. Which has been purchased by the blood of Jesus. Yes. But he's also saying, as soon as he leaves, the grievous wolves, basically the devil and his people, are coming for, wow, the, for, wow. the, for the flock. Wow. And that they should be on guard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because the devil is coming for us. Wow. He wants us. He has to take us because he knows at the end of the day he's going to lose. My and he Lord. wants to take down everything of God that he can. Yes. And so he's saying to them, also, other uh, own self, self shall men arise mm -hmm. and speak perverse things, draw away wow. the disciples. Yes, yes. So people are going to come in and say all kind of foolishness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he, just to pull up the people who are truly of God away from the faith. Wow. And so basically Paul is warning the people, mm -hmm. the overseers, the people in the church, that the wolves are loose and they're coming to destroy as much and as often as they can the children of God. Wow. But we're here to say today they won't win. Amen. Hallelujah. But you also have to be vigilant because they will siphon off a few wow. who won't be paying attention, yes. or who won't take things seriously. Mm. 
or they be, you know, hoodwinking and believing what they're saying. But this is Paul's first warning. Okay. Wow, that's intense. First John four, one and three. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it is that it should soon come, and even now already is it in the world. Wow. So uh what he's saying is we have to be really careful about what we hear people say and minister the word. Because what he's saying to you is if you have one preaching to you mm -hmm. and saying uh, God this, God that, yes. but he doesn't acknowledge Jesus, right, right. it's not of God. Amen. Because Jesus is who God put at the head of the church. Yes. And everything runs through him. Amen. And if that person or those people who are missing the word don't acknowledge Jesus as the head right. of their life, they're not of God. Amen. So right away, basically telling you, run away from them. That's right. Ignore them. Mm. Because they're not bringing God's word. They're not Amen. true to Amen. the word. And so, this is every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come into the world, as in the world, in, in the flesh, is of God. Yes, yes. Because truly, if you are of, of the enemy, he doesn't give Jesus no props. <laughs> none at all. He can't even fix his mouth to say it. And if he said, it, I guarantee the next two things I will come and condemn right. him in some form. Because he can't really accept Jesus. He hates Jesus. So he's not here to give Jesus no props at all. Amen. So if he doesn't give, but Jesus is the head of his conversation, right. run. Amen. And it says... And every spirit that confess not Jesus has come into the world is, is not of God. And here's the most important thing that we need to really understand today. That this spirit of the Antichrist, which I have heard, is shall come, even now already is in the world. Amen. If you haven't paid attention to what's going on in the world, this clearly tells you that the Antichrist and his spirit is here. That's right. He's of chaos. He's a liar. He's a murderer. Yes, he is. He's a, a, a discord. Mm -hmm. or, yes. So, if you notice in the world, all that's going on today, he is showing himself <laughs> in the not necessarily in the physical, but in the spirit. Right. He's he's alive. He's moving and causing all kind of discord. And at some point, unfortunately, we're going to want to see him in the flesh. Mm -hmm. But that's what the Lord has said would happen, so it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Prepare yourself. Yeah. Be of God, and you won't have, you'll be well prepared to deal with that. Amen. Amen. All right. 2 John 1 through 7. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be with you, mercy and peace. For God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found that thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, Lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto you, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this love, that we walk after his commandments, this is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye shall walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Uh, that's, that's a mouthful. Yes, it is. But as it said, the elder unto the elect lady and her children, 
whom I love in truth. Mm -hmm. So he's basically saying to her that he's he's uh, very happy and pleased and, and in love that the lady is set the truth. That she's raising her children in truth. Amen there, yes. And grace and mercy and peace of the yes. Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Truth and love. Yes. Rejoice greatly that I found the children walking in truth. Mm -hmm. And we receive the commandments from the Father. Wow. And though I beseech the, the lady was through, I wrote new, no new commandments, but which we have already begun, that we love one another. That's a very important thing that we also have to, we know it's difficult because everyone has so many different moods and swings, but God is constantly commanding us to love one another, show love and respect. Even sometime when you don't really feel the most about someone, you still have to show some respect to them. And, and as, as much as you show respect and mean no, <clears throat> excuse me, over time, you will become the, again to fall in love with that person. So we know it's difficult, but God gives us things that we know are difficult, but we have to show ourselves uh, committed to do what's right as the Father commands us. Amen. You have to, like we say in the past, that when you really want something bad enough, you commit yourself to it. And the Father wants us to commit ourselves to his will and his commandments because that's what's going to get us saved, that's what's going to keep us saved, and that's what's going to get us in the glory with the Lord. Anything other than that commitment is going to put you at risk for the wolves and they're waiting. Any slip up, any kind of crack in your armor, you're coming to get in. And the Lord is saying if you stay in truth and love in the commandments as he heard from the beginning. For many deceivers will enter into the world who will confess that who confess not Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. You already know they're not of God. We just said that. That those people cannot be of God. If Jesus is not the head of that conversation, it's not of God. That's why he allowed his son to die, to save us, shed his blood. He didn't do all that for him to, um, to come and die and shed his blood. And then he's not irrelevant. He's just another little way for you to come to him. He's the only way. Otherwise, there would be no sense for him to go to a murderous death for us who in essence really wasn't worthy, but Amen. he loved us. Yes. And so that made it that we must follow Christ because he gave everything up for us. So anybody come, anything other than Christ, wow. move away. That's a good one. Amen. Move away from him. You can engage him, try to conversate them about Christ, but right. they're not bringing Christ and they ain't trying to hear Christ. And as the Bible said, uh, brush the dust off your feet and keep it moving. <laughs> yes. You already done your job. Amen. Maybe somebody else down the road will be able to yes, affect that's right. them. That's right. But at your, <clears throat> at your point, they're not reachable. Amen. You have to just move on because you keep just, you'll find yourself stagnant, frustrated. Yes. Beating yourself in the head, thinking that you're not worthy of what you're That's doing. Right. It's really them because they're not trying to comprehend what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if they're not saying Jesus, they're not of God. Amen. Okay. Oh, and also they said that uh, this deceiver and the Antichrist, yes. they're one. You cannot ignore this thing, people, Bible speaks of Antichrist. It's real, it's here, mm -hmm. and you have to prepare yourself because he's not nothing to play with. That's right. If you don't have full God in you, if the Lord ain't, blood is not covering you, he is going to devour you. Wow, wow. He's going to take you. Jesus. 
That's why the wolves are running rampant in the church because he's trying to suck up all the people out of the church. Wow. Because they know if he can do any kind of damage to the church, he, he feels he's won. Yes, yes. Now we know he won't happen, but that don't mean you have to make it so he can even have a foothold mm -hmm. in the church. Yes. So, be aware of this Antichrist because he's here. Yes. He's not visible enough for us to know who he is personally, yes. but his his spirit, his movement has taken over. Yes. It's chaos all over the world. That's not by accident. Mm -hmm. Because we know he's the father of chaos. Yes, he is. So, be more vigilant, please. All right. First Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, mm. as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. As we just said, be vigilant in the Lord. Yes. Because the devil is, he's, he's at his last legs. Mm -hmm. And he's pouring out all his people. Yes. All, his ho all his most powerful demons, all, they're all coming out. They're all on a mission to try to stop whatever they can stop. Because we know you feel it. All the true saints of God feel God is going about to do his thing. Yes. <laughs> we know he's going to do his thing. And the devil know. Mm -hmm. So he's doing whatever he can to cause disruption. Yes. But true saints of God who believe and love God, who God has put power and, and authority in them, will overcome them. Yes. Will rule them. Amen. And we know, I'll just say this, we can't, we not seem to be like the old church. The old church and Peter and Paul and all them came around. Devils and demons, they fled. Seems like our people today don't have that power. Wow. Because demons and devils all hanging around us. Jesus. So we all need more anointing. We need more power. More in more induction in the power of God yes. to run these devils and demons off. Just look at the Old Testament. I mean, in the, the uh, New Testament, when Peter came into the marketplace, people brought their sick and their disease and their demons filled people. And his shadow went over them and they were healed. Wow. He didn't even touch it. That's from the spirit and power of God. Yes. Unfortunately, we don't seem to have that much wow. today. Wow. And we need it. We need to pray and ask God. To fill us to this degree. Yes. That when we move, people Jesus. heal, set free. Jesus. And the demons run. Mm, my God. Or they have to hold their peace. My Lord. This is what we strive for today. Jesus. All right. Second Peter 1, 21. For the prophecy came not in old time, but the will of man. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And we, uh, we have to say today, it's not going to be very popular. Too many of us claim to be Holy Ghost filled, but there's no real evidence of it. Mm. Yes. Because. As we said before, a lot of stuff is going on that we know in the old church could never happen. Amen. Or it would have a response to it. That's right. That's right. Today is no response. Mm. And the Holy Ghost that we read and believe would not tolerate a lot of stuff we see going on today. Yes. There's too much stuff going on. That people who are full of full of the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues and all, and they're just as bad as everyone else. Wow. That's not holy men of God. Amen. Men or all women. Yes. So we need to really check ourselves to be sure that we feel with God's spirit. Amen. Because there's certain things we know we, we, we have a tendency to mess up because we're human. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain level you should never be at. Right, right. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. You should be chastised. Mm -hmm. 
I can say personally, anytime that I'm out of order, he chastises me. Mm -hmm. He doesn't let, let up on me until I repent. Amen. So if you do a lot of stuff and you feel with the spirit and you you out of order and you don't feel no type feel of repent, repentant or you're not being told to repent, you ain't got God in you. Mm, wow. You don't have it. Any true person of God full of the spirit has to be convicted. Yes. Has to be pricked. Yes. To do what's right. Amen. If you don't feel that or you ignore it to the extent that you don't stop. Right. And you're in trouble. Amen. Let's, let's keep it real. These are holy men of God. The Spirit of God moved in them. They responded mm -hmm. as the Spirit told them. Yes. And they didn't allow a lot of foolishness from them or others around their midst. Right, right. Maybe some further out, but not in their circle. Mm -hmm. They couldn't have it. It wouldn't be tolerated. Right. So we're just saying that as the Spirit moves, you should move. So, if you got Holy Ghost and you speaking in tongues, you shouldn't be too much error going on. That's right. And you should repent when you know you're wrong. That's right. Otherwise, you won't have the Spirit of God. Okay. Second Peter, two and one, and then verses 12, 15, and 18. But there were false prophets among, also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring up themselves swift destruction. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. And when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the lust of the flesh, through much wantingness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Okay, so here's Peter. I, I guess people consider him Jesus' favorite. I don't know. But uh, let's be clear. Peter had the Spirit of God in him. So he's speaking truth. And he's saying there's a lot of false prophets, which we all see today. We know they're prominent, Jesus. unfortunately. All on um, social media. Yes. And fake teachers, which bring damnness damnable heresy heresy yes. is like overthrowing and this this craziness yes as we know today trying to take over stuff yes yes that don't belong in their realm mm. and so and even denying the lord which we know is ridiculous <laughs> and them themselves will bring destruction on them so what he's saying, you you can do all this, all these fake prophets, all that. You're gonna be destroyed. Yes. This is not gonna go on un, challenge. Unfortunately, you you don't have the system to realize that this is gonna happen to you. Mm -hmm. And why you speaking truth and lying? Yeah. You're gonna get destroyed. Wow. And it says the natural brute beasts, mm -hmm. which have been taken, destroyed, and speak evil of things they not even understand. That's right. That's right. They shall utter perish in their own corruption. Mm -hmm. So brute beasts is really the day. These people mm -hmm. here are just absolutely out of control. Yes, they are. They don't even seem to be human no more. That's right. No feeling, no remorse. That's right. Nothing that there goes on in the world mm. to people. They wow. don't care. Wow. Long as they, I get mine. Yes, yes. They rob, they steal, they kill, they murder, everything. Mm -hmm. But no feel. That's right, that's right. No emotion. That's a beast. That's not even human. That's right. Even humans feel when they, even people when they kill roaches at some time or whatever, <laughs> they feel like, you know, he got to, I got to kill him, but well, it's all, you know, wow. You know, oh, Jesus. Jeez. <laughs> but these people kill humans and they don't even care. 
They don't feel no way towards that. And the Lord is very unpleased because these this, these lives are not yours. He made, he created, he made them. It's his choice who shall live and who shall die. That's right. Not that's you. right. That's right. And so the saying uh, Balaam, mm -hmm. who was uh, some whack prophet, mm -hmm. was going around, I recall, selling, uh, he was getting paid to say all that he wanted, mm -hmm. those people wanted. Do you know, like today, what's the, the uh, what's that gospel we, we always talk about? The uh, pros prosperity gospel. Oh, yes, yes. Whatever yes. people wanted to hear and okay. feel, he would give them and okay. I prophesize this and this going to happen yeah. to their liking. Amen. But he, one time he did it and God was not pleased with him. He's the one, if you haven't read the story, he's the one who was on the donkey. And the angel of death was standing before him with a sword ready to chop him up. Mm -hmm. And he kept moving and the donkey stopped. Yes. And he kept, you know how they do, he kept hitting the donkey, the donkey that's was moving. Right, that's right, that's right. Finally the donkey told him, hey, why are you hitting me? God opened the donkey's mouth yes. and he spoke. Mm -hmm. I know some people, oh, that's ridiculous. Trust me, God has the ability. Hey, yes, he does. Amen. And the donkey spoke and asked him, do you not see him that's, that's right. in front there with that sword? That's right. And God opened up the eyes of the man, and he seen that angel standing there ready to chop him up. <laughs> and so he had to repent. That's right. So I'm telling you, at any point, God can step to you. Yes, yes. If you're out of order, if you blaspheme his name, or you do all that stuff you do, it's not out of the possibility God won't step to you. And show you who God is. Yes, yes. And so, these brutal beasts are going to experience these things. Oh yes, they are. You, you can't go unchallenged because they already feel they they have the right to do whatever they want. But that's not so. That's right. And so, we're saying to you, these people are living in error, and all their lust and all their sweet speaking very elegant looking ways is false. Uh -huh. Yes. That's to draw you into that narrative or that wolves mm -hmm. as sheep clothing yes. and pull you in so they can devour you. Wow. See a lot of us have look really cute and speak well on the YouTube and all. They're wolves. Wow. Because they're not truly taking you to Jesus Christ. And they're not trying to take advantage of you or, or trying to be uh, famous and popular. They're only trying to do what the Lord is telling them to do, to save souls. That's their job. That's their aim. Anything other than that is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And wolves will be slain. Yes, they will. So... Stop following the wolf. Follow the God that made all things possible through his son Jesus. And so we just saying, you have to be aware of these things. And you've been blessed by God. He's giving you the answers to all these problems, mm -hmm. these issues. He's, yeah. he's warning you. They're here, yes. written down, inspired by the Spirit of God. Take advantage of it because if you don't, you're going to be consumed through these wolves. Jesus. All right. Jesus. Mm. Wow. Okay. This is some good word. I mean, oh my goodness. I'm. What am I up to? You didn't. I got. Second you. Peter three three. Okay. Second Peter three and three. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. Walking after their own lusts. And we see that. Yes. I know people say, oh, you keep saying the last days, the last mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. Look at the scriptures. They tell you. It clearly points out the last days. What's going to happen? What you're going to see? What's going to happen next? And you can look day by day by day and you see it transpiring. Mm. Sometimes not always in your area, in your country. 
looking at, if you watch the news, other countries, you see these things happen. Mm. Today is floods and fires. Now they got so many forest fires all over the world yes, burning yes, up. They yes. have almost whole countries look like burned up. Yes, yes. That's not by choice. That's not by accident. It's, it's the Lord speaking and telling you these things are going to happen. And he warned you. So you have no excuse when it comes to being saved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it says the scoffers walking down their own lust. We, we see people, you know, they're just lustful, not just sexual, lust for money. That's right. Power. Their own gain. Just lust is anything that comes to their mind, they lust and they, they feel they should have. It. Yes, yes. And they will go to to any means to do it and get it. Yes. These are the sculptors. Mm -hmm. These are the people who are shining today. Wow. They're shining. That's you see right. It? That's right. Everywhere. Wow. But they don't realize this. Along with that is the last days. My Lord. To be saved. Jesus. My God. So. Stay on with your little lustful. Scuffling, doing your thing. Jesus. But the last days is looking in you in the face. Amen. And if Jesus ain't in that last day picture, mm. you're going to get, you're going to really see. If you think the forest fires are bad, mm. hell is a whole lot worse. Yes, it is. Only problem with that is you ain't getting no relief from that. Hey, my Lord. At least when the forest fire, the thing burn up, it just, yeah, it's that's done. That's right, that's right. Hell is continuous. That's right. Everybody and from that, to judgment to the worst one, the lake of fire. Wow. Which is forever. My God. All right. Wow. You want to share anything? You know I do. You must have felt it in the spirit. <laughs> when you talked about the scoffers and you said those are the ones that are shining today, the, the, the Holy Spirit made me think of the devil with a flashlight. You know, because they're not shining with God's light on them. It's an imitation, false light. The devil is is tricking them into thinking that it's the light of God, but it's his imitation flashlights shining on these scoffers, you know? Right. Okay. First John 2 and 18. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So... It's even more specific. Many yes. antichrists. But that's yeah. the spirit. That's his spirit. There's many of them floating mm -hmm. around. You can't get around it. It's destruction everywhere. Yes. That's his, that was the word he used. That's his mantra. Destruction. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. He's here to destroy everything of God. And to prop up his father, the devil. Wow. Wow. Yes. He wants to make his father... Look nah. equal with this with God. Ain't that something? Your God ain't no special than my God mm -hmm. or my Father. Yes. But we know our Father, who's great of all, Amen. And His Son Jesus is greater than them. Amen. Who He will destroy in time. Yes, He will. So He's basically giving a falsehood. Yes, He is. To believe that they're on the same level. That's as right. God. That's right. But they're not. <laughs> they're only camouflaging. Their own destruction, which is coming. That's right. That's right. So, little children, which is us, mm -hmm. be vigilant with the Lord, That's because right. at the end of the day, the Antichrist and all his hope, all his people <laughs> are going to <laughs> the lake of fire, Amen. where you don't want to end up. That's right. All right. Hosea four and six: My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject. Thee, and thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Wow. So, we, this is a pretty famous statement. People, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Yes, 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 it is. So, that really shouldn't be true because the knowledge is everywhere. Yes, it is. It's not before maybe you had one or two little prophets, you go to the synagogue and they preach. 
We got the word everywhere. That's right. It's no excuse to say you don't know or have no knowledge of God. That's right. That's because right. it's everywhere. Even some of it, even the false uh, prophets and teachers are still preaching the true word. That's just fake because they're where they live their life. Yeah. When you see behind the scenes, you, they're not of God. But they're still preaching true word. A lot of them. Not all, but a lot. Amen. God can use anyone to get his word out. Thank you for making that distinction. Yes. Yes. Not all. Amen. But he still uses people even though they don't live right. That's right. And preach his word. His That's word true. is everywhere. You can't you cannot escape it no longer. Amen. That will not be an excuse you can say to him, yeah. I didn't hear, I didn't know. Because the word is everywhere. You right. pick up a Bible. You get YouTube. That's right. Google. Google. Yes, Lord. Alexa, they all That's right. That's give you right. some knowledge of God. Yeah. So when you come before Him, you can't. Oh Lord. You can't. You can't say to Him, "I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear. No one told me." Are you trying to shop for gun? So. Sorry, I can't tell what you want to order. Let's so, try again. So, I said to reject, he said he will reject the priests, the very people who are supposed to be representing him. Because mm -hmm. he knows they're not true. They're part of the wolf. Yes. They're, they're the wolves who got up in the church and among the people. Fake and phony. Yes. And so he's telling you, he doesn't even acknowledge them no more. Because he knows they're not bringing the truth. And so he says, He has forsaken the law, thy, thy God, and I will also forget thy children. So you also endanger your children. That's right, your offspring, yes. When you're not living well, Jesus. that means you're not teaching your children. That means they are, mm -hmm. as we see today, our children are in error today. Yes. That's because they're not being trained. Oh, my God. And those who have been trained have been caught up in the world and reject. The that's true right, teachings that's right. to make them good citizens, My good Lord. people, they reject it. So every parent is not bad, sometimes it's the children. Mm -hmm. But it's all in the mix yeah. of those who are not accepting the will of God. Jesus. Or not acknowledging God in any form that he could minister them to, for them to repent and change their way. Everyone is going to be accountable. You're not going to be able to give God no excuse. He's given everyone ample of time to get done what they need done. Amen. All right. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 and then 21. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So here's the, here's our wolves and sheep clothing, mm -hmm. the so-called prophets. And it's very funny because the prophets are the ones really seem to be emphasized. Because they're the ones who's supposed to really have the ear and the mouth of God. Yes, yes. So once you have that title, people really latch on to you. And unfortunately, sometimes those are very ones that deceive us. Because we think, oh, the Lord has said this, and the Lord told right, me that. Right, so people, right. they, they hearken to hear right. what the Lord is saying. And depending on where they're preaching and minister, and what would benefit them, they say all those things that will grant, give them grandizement. Mm -hmm. Get them paid, as they say. Because right. now our prophets are about paid. Whoa, there you go. They're not about true spirit of God business. They're about pay. Mm. Everyone want to get their money up. And so that's just how they function. But true prophets of God, not saying they can't get money, but they don't initiate money. That's right. They don't say to you, well, I need such and such Jesus. to preach or bring word. That's right, that's right. I, you said, I need you to come and I'm there. That's right, that's right. I have a word from the Lord. My that God. word is not for sale. 
Amen. Now, God can touch their heart to give you. That's right. Provide you a little love offerings, they, come, they say, right? Amen. But you can't initiate money. That right. shouldn't be in the conversation. Wow. Because that word you're giving is from God. It's That's free. right. That's right. God should charge you. God should charge you for allowing you to do His work, <laughs> but He doesn't. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful about how you go about doing your business in God's name. Amen. And so, anyway, getting off the subject, the prophets are one of the seen the most prevalent, and they said those are the ones that come in sheep clothing mm -hmm. are the ravenous wolves. Yes, yes. Because they have the ear of people, they have the confidence, and they listen and they. Hawking on everything they say, and he draw them in yes. into his lair, and then he slay them. Wow, wow. Or he take them over and have them under his wing yes. for his father, the enemy. That's right. So, but the Lord has said to counteract them, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but that he does the will of my father. So if you have the title, apostle, prophet, whatever you are. If you're not truly doing what God said, you're not going to get into the kingdom. Wow. Mm. Because he know you're false. Yes, he does. He know you're a wolf Jesus. who attacks his church wow. and his people. So you're not going to cover up that over him That's thinking right. that he's not going to see who you were. And that you're going to try to slide into the kingdom now. Mm, my God. There'll probably be an angel of death waiting for you at the wow, door. Wow, wow. Because you ain't getting in here. Jesus. We know who you are. Mm -hmm. And you ain't about us. Wow. So, all right. Matthew 10 and 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now, this is, a lot of people say, well, Jesus, why would you send us in the wolves? Unfortunately, we have to go out among people who are not the best. But those are the ones he wants saved. Uh -huh. yes. I had a conversation the other day uh, at work. We were discussing God's will and things he does. And they would say, well, why was he hanging out with the I won't use the word they use, we'll use harlot. <laughs> and harlot and the drunkards yeah, and the, yes, the dope fiends yes. and the crackheads. Mm -hmm. But those are the ones that he came to the world to save. He said, I didn't come to save the righteous, I come to save the sinner. So if you are uh, one of the people that you out in the mix of terrible situations, God sent you there because those people need you. Mm -hmm. And so they, they won't be able to come before God and say, I didn't hear no one came to me. That's why he sent us. Right. And sometimes situations are a little dangerous, but we ask for his love and protection mm -hmm. to get it done. Mm -hmm. But you have to be wise as a snake or a serpent because he's cunning, so he you have to know how to cut through some of the foolishness that you got to deal with. But you also have to be harmless as a dove. You have to come humble, respectful. Mm -hmm. Because no one wants to hear someone yelling and screaming in their ear about they're going to die, they're going to do this and that. They're going to turn you off. That's right, that's right. So you have to come humble speaking. Sometimes you might turn tipped up a little, depending mm -hmm. on your situation. That's right. But it has to be... Humble. In love, in love. Yes. So you have to take that into account when you go out and minister to people. You have to come humble first. Mm -hmm. Speak love. Because what you're doing is speaking, giving them love because only the love of God is going to save them. That's right. But sometimes, you know, you meet some, meet some tough cookies. <laughs> so you have to sort of. Learn how to, as it says, as a snake, you have to learn how to maneuver them. Yes. So you can either minister to them or move away from them. Right. right. <laughs> it right. depends on the situation. That's the Sometimes truth. you can't read men, you got to kind of just slide away from them because yep. it's dangerous. That's right. But the Lord is saying he's sent us out to deal with all people. That's right. And so that's that's our commission as yes. sons and daughters of God. Okay. And, and two by two, 
Yes. Right? Because we don't want to be stepping off as lone soldiers and right. get tore up out there. That's true. All right. Revelations 22, 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may be, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So his, this is telling you, this is what is going to get you into the kingdom. These are the requirements. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those with commandments and they live upright and have the access to the tree of life. Yeah. And may enter through the gates of the city of God. That's as we say, if you ain't right, you can't cover up all that foolishness and then you can get in. Because God can see. Amen. You have to do his commandments. He's been monitoring you all your days. So he knows what everyone putting down. Mm -hmm. But it says, without this, for without without that, are dogs, uh, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idlers. All these people are basically are not getting in. And they're a lie. They're going to try to perpetrate all that, all their life and do that. And then at the end of the day, they're going to try to get into the kingdom. Mm. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to happen. You, you have to get into the kingdom. You have to live your life according to the Lord's commandments. Live holy and righteous before him. And Jesus Christ is the head of your life. And be filled with the spirit of God which is equally important. So, all you, you know, I mean, you know who you are. Idle works is murderous. And not always murdered by physically killing. You set up situations where people are going to be destroyed. Wars and, you know, chaos you're causing. Those kill people. Cause them to be without uh, the resources to live, right? Without food and... Yes, yes. Like in all the third world countries where they have no water, no medicine. That set people up to be murdered. That's, you're a murderer. Mm -hmm. When you don't help those people get those resources to help them to live, mm -hmm. you're part of being a murderer. Yes. And naturally you're chasing a homemonger and be mad on them. Just running loose. It seems cute at the time, but spiritually it's death. Yes, yes. So, and sorcerers, well, I'm not first to what's on that subject, but I'm sure there's a lot of that stuff going on. We hear a lot about witchcraft and all this other foolish is going on. I'm not too going that. I don't really pay attention to a lot of that because I got God. But we know I hear a lot of that's going on. You too are going to burn in hell. You might think you're doing something cute. You think you got some extraordinary power. But I can tell you, anytime Jesus says it's done, it's done. Nothing else you can conjure up, it's going to work. Jesus shuts you down, you shut down. So, all right. I just um, needed to, to say something here. <laughs> And this is only for clarification to the listeners, because we, we just heard that if you don't live a certain way, that you're not getting in, right? Right. Okay. We want to make it clear that we are, the scriptures tell us that the key to getting into heaven is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, right? Right. Believing that he came, was crucified, on the third day was risen again. The only reason I'm pointing this out is because they have um, people that may be listening that have lived a rough life and they've changed and feel that maybe they've done too much and I don't want them to hear that word and think because they lived a certain way that they are not eligible to get in if they changed, you know? I, I'm, I'm pointing this out because also as you were speaking it, the Holy Spirit made me think of people that are in prison and maybe they're on um, 
death row and they've done horrible things in their life but at that very end they truly have some type of encounter with the father and make a genuine change to accept him God will allow them in Good. even if their life was horrible so I want to make it clear to anyone listening as ministers of God we are not telling you that we know who is in heaven and who is in hell God is the only one that makes that decision and we don't know at the end of any person's life what encounter they had with the father for him to say son or daughter I accept you in right so I had to make that clear because I don't want anyone to feel hopeless. No matter what you've done in your life, no matter what you are doing today that may be against God, you have a chance to turn. You have an opportunity to the kingdom of heaven if you repent. Don't fake it, right? Don't be one of those wolves thinking that you fooling man, but you can't fool God. He sees right through your costume. So I'm stupid, I believe you can fool him. That's right. <laughs> God see right through the costume that you put on. So I'm speaking to those that are in bad situations right now. You can still have eternal life if you come to the God the Father with a genuine repentance. But that's, that was the key I was gonna say. Amen. You have to repent. Yes, yes. Speak That's, on that. I'm, what I'm saying, I'm not saying that you can't. All these whole mongers, all of them can't get in. But they won't get in if they don't repent and uh, apologize to God for the way they've lived their life. Yes, yes, That's yes. the key. Amen. Repent. Yes. So if you, if you last, as I preached before, you don't want to wait till the last moment that's right. to try to repent because that's not guaranteeing you to get you over. Right. But it can happen. Amen. But we saying to you, that's why we minister every Sunday, yes. don't wait to that point. That's right. That's right. Because that's not guaranteed. Amen. But it's by chance or mercy of God that's right. at the last moment or your last breath. He might accept you because yes. you repented yes. truly in your heart. Yes. Or you sitting in prison for life. Right, right. If you truly repent of your heart, yes. the Lord would accept you. Amen. That's what I sh should have said. But Amen. Amen. we know sometimes people don't really do that. Amen. Amen. Repentance is the key. Yes, it is. You have to repent in My your God. heart and mean it. Yes. So... Any hope mongers, murders, idol worship, you can get in, but you're going to have to get that off you. Amen. Yes. You have to take that sin off you. That's right. And Jesus have to wash your body in his blood. Amen. You understand? Washed and then you can blood. get in. Yes. So there's hope. Yes, But it you is. can't wait till the last moment for yes. hope. That's yes. not that's not what you want because we that's can't not, never that's say. Not wise. Yeah, you can't never say how that might work out for you. Amen. All right, so we good with that. Amen. Revelation 12 and 9 and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him now this is this is why we having so much issue in the world mm -hmm. because of this guy yes the dragon the great dragon whatever I, I wouldn't say great but that's how they characterize it <laughs> and the devil Yes. Because he wanted to be greater than God or as God. My and Lord. He, as we said before, you can't be greater than your creator. That's right. That's just foolish. Mm -hmm. And then he wanted accolades. He wanted to be praised and worshipped like a creator. Yes. No. Yes. God said, I don't give my glory to no one. That's right. That's mine. Amen. So he wanted a piece of that, mm -hmm. if not all. Yes. And so the Lord had to get him out. Mm -hmm. He couldn't have that spirit hanging among his people. Yes. And unfortunately, some of the angels went with him. Mm -hmm. They they got caught up in it. Like we say, he's the he's the original wolf. Yes, yes, he is. And he went <laughs> and he ravaged them and he took them. That's and right. now they down locked up right now into mm. the pit of hell. Wow. Chain. Jesus. Waiting for that day to be judged. My lord, my lord. They should they should want to ravish him when That's they get right. out That's because right. he caused them to be there. 
when they was in glory with the greatest God ever. But they blew it. And so this is the guy. And so the Lord, he deceived so much up in heaven, and Lord tossed him out mm -hmm. to the earth. Yeah. Unfortunately, down here where we are. <laughs> but we're going to overcome him anyway, Amen. despite his foolishness. Amen. So we just want you to know this is kind of what transpired all this to be what it is today. Yes. So, all right. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1, and then 5, um, 4 and 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. So, we kind of went through a lot of this, but it's worth saying. Mm -hmm. Also, the last days perilous times shall yes, come. Yes. Well, it ain't just coming, it's here. It's the truth, Lord. It's here. And it says the traitor mm -hmm. who will trade against God. Yes. You ain't trading against other you, you trading against God. This is yes. the issue. You traitor against your creator. Yes, yes. Who made you and you turned against him. Mm -hmm. And so you got become high minded. Mm -hmm. Thinking you above everything else. Wow. Above everyone. Everyone thinks they're above everyone. Yes, yes. That's why you have so much chaos in the world because mm -hmm. everyone is about themselves. Yes. And it says, lovers of pleasure more than God. Mm -hmm. So, no, we all like have fun. But if God is not the head, Amen. then your pleasure is, is fruitless. Yes, it is. It might seem wonderful at the moment, but at the end of the day, spiritually, it's going to kill you. Right. Because you put God on the back burner. That's right. God said he doesn't go on the back burner. He's on the front. Amen. And says a form of godliness, which that's what we say today. Oh, cause people say to me, oh, well, if you're a good person, you do good things, you're that's still right. going to die. Go ahead. Well, right. that's the form of godliness, yes. but that's not enough. Amen. And so you need Jesus Christ to be the head of yes. your life. Yes. That's will be enough. Amen. And so deny the power there. Yes, they form God, but they deny the power. The That's power right. of God. That's right. They don't realize, even though you're a good person, you still need God. Yes. To be running your life. Amen. And it says, and then they turn, from so, such so, turn, turn away. away. So fun. now, well, I'm good and all that, and I still got to do all that, man. I'm not trying to hear that. I heard it. I've been here. I heard that this week. Well, if I got to do all that, man, pff, I, what's, what's the point? So, People don't want to go to full, uh, what's this called, full, um, I hate my tongue tied, full of, uh, 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 was it commitment or surrender to yes, God? Yes, yes, thank you, yes, yes. yes, full surrender to God, they don't want to do that, they want to leave a piece of something of their own to right. do what they choose, That's right. they don't want God to be, as a fellow told me, controlling him. Yeah. But also God made him. Mm -hmm. So you owe him that. Yes, yes. So it's, you can be good as you want, but if God is not controlling your life, it's not enough. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we just want to put that out there. Yes. We know there's some wonderful people. That's right, that's right. And you got you kind of say, oh, that's God, you all got to be in them. But they don't have the full coverage of God. Yes. That's, wow. that's Jesus. Who sacrificed his life. Yes. And his blood is not covering them. So they're not they're not saved. Yes. So unfortunately when they die, mm. they're going to they're going to hell. Mm. It's hard to tell people that. They can't see past it. But if God is not Jesus is not the head of your life, that's what is the Bible said that is what your end will be. We don't make the rules. God made the rules, but he's also merciful. He gave you an opportunity. He gave you a way out. You can't make your own way out. You got to go the way out he made. Yes, yes. And you can be saved. You can be spared all that. Amen. And all that goodness that you do will be doubly great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because God is also not ahead of this. That's right. Good God, stuff God that you do. glorified. Yes. Do it. So, all right. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap up to themselves teachers 
having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So we know today, people don't like sound doctrine. That's the truth. That's why we have so many denominations. Mm. Because Mom, everyone Lord. has decided that certain doctrine is not theirs, mm. that they shouldn't follow. Right. God has gave one word, and now he has 10 million words. That's right, versions. Yes. Mm. So if you listen to sound doctrine, whether you like it or not, that's what it is. Yes. That's what you follow if you truly forgot. And, but usually that's the lust of their own heart that they want to follow and do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. That's that human element that's causing us to, to lose our lives. Mm -hmm. And it says, everyone has itchy ears. They always want to hear something new, mm -hmm. something exciting, something wonderful. Sound doctrine is solid doctrine. It don't go from one side to the other. That's it's right. straight down the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's how you live your life. I know sometimes it doesn't sound pretty. People like me don't sound old. You know, we sound great and we jump in and shouting. That sounds great. But if it's not totally sound doctrine, it's going to get you nowhere. That's right. So it says uh, a lot of people have itchy ears. And they, they turn away from the truth and they listen to lies, fables. That's where the wolf come in. Because mm -hmm. he spin and spin the doctrine around so you can go running behind that. But as you get to the end of it, you see that doctrine is a lie. Now you better pray you ain't so far away that you can't get back to the sound doctrine. Because the wolf is going to take you as far as he can away from that. So, stick to the scriptures. Anyone veers too far away from the scriptures, he's a wolf. Because the scriptures are clear. And the Lord said you can't take away, you can't add on or take away his word. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, once you start seeing that, you know you're dealing with a wolf leave or tell him rebuke him yes it, get away yes, from me yes. satan i That's rebuke right. you all right second corinthians eleven thirteen through 15. for such are false apostles deceitful workers <clears throat> transforming themselves into the apostles of christ and no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. So as we see here that, unfortunately, we see a lot of people, I don't want to throw out titles, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. fake leaders, yes. I'll just put that. They're deceitful workers. They, they claim to be of Christ, but they're not. They have people doing all kinds of stuff That's out right. of order. Yes. Nothing to do with God. Tough. Wow. They, they come, camouflage it with God's name, but when you look underneath, it ain't nothing to do with God. Right. It's grandizing and people getting rich. Mm -hmm. People, you know, having people serve them. All of a sudden, they become God to these people because That's now right. they're serving them and doing all they want. So they become idols to people. That's not of God. That's that's what you consider. Says Satan himself transferred to an angel of light, and they are great. Fled. So basically, they the wolves transfer themselves into the light. Yes. To camouflage to keep you from seeing what they really are. Sure. What they fall was great at that. That's why they're like that. That's they right. learn from him. As we learn from God and Christ, they learn from him how to be deceiving so they can devour you. But therefore, there's no great thing in his ministers also transform ministers of righteousness who at the end shall be according to their works. So you'll see their works if you really look. Pay attention. 
if you really look through and analyze these people today, you'll see where they're coming from. The Lord will open up your understanding and show you what these people are about. Hmm. If you really seek him. Oh my God. So, be aware of these people. For sure. Satan is, like he says, transformed the angel of light. He, as we realized in the scripture early on that he spoke to Jesus through the scriptures. <laughs> he used the scriptures on Jesus. Yes. Who is the word. He used the scriptures on himself. <laughs> but Jesus wasn't fooled by his nonsense. Because he knew who he was. And he threw the words back at him. He said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So step off. All right. Galatians 1, 8 and 9. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have received, let him be accursed. So if you're preaching anything other than the gospel, you're basically accursed. Mm. So you think you can say and do all these different things and create all these different little gospels and uh, prosperity and all this other stuff. You're accursed. That's right. It's clear right there. That I, it's not me saying it. That's right. That's the scriptures say that. So you do anything other than what God has said and preach His word. If you change or you flip something around, you are cursed. And He says, uh, as we see before, I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be a curse. Right. So, so Paul basically put a curse on you. <laughs> He called a curse out on you. He called it. Because he put a lot of work in preaching the gospel. The truth. And he's saying, I ain't, I'm not trying to have all you guys running around here. Or people. Spreading all this foolish gospel. You're going to get a curse on you. You're going to be punished. I, let's put that. You're going to be punished. How about That's a better word? Yeah. That's a good one. You're going to be punished. Because you're spreading falsehoods. Against the true word. Hmm. So, you should think about that. If you're reading the scriptures and you're a minister, you're whoever you are, if you're not preaching the true, true word of God, you're putting yourself in judgment. Wow. Sometimes these things are simple, but they're to the, to the point, and it's powerful. You're putting yourself at risk. You normally preach a lot of other foolishness that don't really pertain to what God really wants out. That's right. Like he said, the false prophets. Yeah. He's going to burn them. He's going to put fire to them. Mm -hmm. That goes for your apostles, you teachers, wow. you pastors. You're all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing right, you're not doing according to what thus said the Lord, wow. you are in judgment. Mm -hmm. You are cursed. And God keeps his word. Yes, he does. So, if you have risk, you better get out of that. Well, you can't. Mm -hmm. You don't want to die and that sin, that sin, and that curse is on you. That's right. So, okay. all right. Ezekiel 22, 25 through 27. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. Like a roaring lion, lion, Ravening, ravening, ravening yeah. the prey that they have devoured souls, that they have taken the treasure and precious things, they have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things, they have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths, and I am profane among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravening the prey, 
to shed blood and to destroy souls to get dishonest gain. Wow, that's a mouthful. Yes. <clears throat> uh, as we know, the theme, the ravaging wolves, mm -hmm. this says the lion, but they're all in the same boat. Yes. And they're here to devour souls. Mm. And they have taken the precious treasure things of God and they uh, basically defamed them. That's right. It says, all profane all the profane my holy things and put different no difference between the holy and the profane. Mm -hmm. So right. now you can't tell the difference. Wow. Ain't that something? Because they made a soul uh unholy. Yes, yes. They camouflaged the holy and made it look like the profane. So you you can't think God isn't gonna be pleased with that. That's right. And so it says show you they have shown difference, no difference between the clean and the unclean. You cannot tell the difference That's right. between that is which is clean or dirty. That's awful. Yes. That's yes. absolutely terrible. Yes, it is. There's always a distinction between what's clean and what's unclean. Right, and you right. can't tell the difference. That is perverted. Yes, it is. And I can't see how long God can continue to, to look at that mm. and not react. He's reacting, but you know him, he could just mm. go off. <laughs> Say, look, I'm, I'm, no, 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 there ain't no more of this. It's just the mercy of God. You people are still allowed to function. Yes. But your function is going to run out. Mm -hmm. How long do you think that's going to happen? Mm -hmm. You're going to keep doing this. Turning the holy things into... Profane. Profane. We preached a sermon before about the guy with the writing on the wall. Mm, yes, he took yes. the holy things of God, the, the, the vessels, and was drinking and partying out of them. Mm -hmm. And God did not have that. You know, that's right. He turned on that dude so viciously. <laughs> it wasn't funny. <laughs> so here you take the clean and make it look the same as unclean. It's punishment. I know people say, oh, you keep punishing me, punish me. This is for your good. This ain't for me because I'm not in punishment. I'm not trying to live that life. Oh, that's right. I'm not trying to be punished. I can't take man's punishment. Let's know I'm trying to take God's punishment. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't like it, that's on you. But you better adhere to it. <laughs> if you got anything holy or holy, it's you. You're the temple of God and holy. You better keep it clean mm -hmm. because God is not having no uncleanness around him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't tolerate that, that sin. He, God is intolerable to sin. Mm. So, all right. Romans 16, 17, and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. So this is the end of the sermon, but we just want you to get a full understanding of why this, the title was what it was. Mm -hmm. And it says, Now you beseech you, brother, to mark them that cause division contrary to the doctrine. Avoid them. Yes. Anyone who's not preaching the true word of God, which is Jesus Christ as the head, mm -hmm. avoid them. Amen. Let not such serve, uh, for they that uh, such serve not our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, but their own belly, mm -hmm. their own prosperity, yes. their own gains, which really is the gain of their father, the enemy. Mm -hmm. That's for him. They're not really doing it for them. That's really their enemy or the Satan is prodding them. That's for his glory mm -hmm. to see people being destroyed or living unholy. Yeah. That's for him. Yeah. They might get benefits out of it. Like we work and the boss pay us. But at the end of the day, the boss is profiting. At the end of the day, Satan's profiting from you living unclean and unholy and spreading falsehoods in the doctrine. Right, right. That's, that's for his glory. 
and they're telling you to avoid them because we're not here to grant to 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 prop up Satan. We're here to prop up God. Amen. He's the He's the reason for us even being alive. Amen. Amen. It says, and the old belly and by the good word speaks deceive the heart of simple. So they take advantage of the people who don't really know or are, are, are easy to be convinced. Right, right, yes. They get at them. And once they get enough of them following them, they got a big legion mm -hmm. of people. Now they're going to all try to go against God with their armies. You know, oh, yes, yeah, see, we, we know who God is. We, we, we represent God. No, you represent the enemy. That's right. But God's going to show all of y'all. Mm -hmm. So... Do yourself a favor. If you don't hear anyone saying true word of God, they don't promote Jesus Christ and fill the spirit of the Almighty, get away from them. Amen. Because they're nothing but ravaging wolves who has infiltrated the church. Wow. I just want to thank you. God bless. Uh, continue to pay attention to the teachings because these are for your benefit. Not for us. We already in the doctrine. We already live in this life. It's for those who are not trying to live, or those who are falling on the wayside. They say you need to come back. Why the coming is good. God bless you, and uh, look forward to another wonderful Sunday with you. May God smile upon you and your family. God bless. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Um, I wasn't even going to come up because Moses, Minister Moses is going to give the um, prayer of salvation. But I had to come up just to say that that word was so good. As I was sitting there listening to it, I was getting so edified from it. And I have to point out the fact that I said before that me and my husband study and um, delivery of the word is different. So when I prepare or type up his messages for him, the only thing that I'm typing up are the actual scriptures. And so when you're listening to him expound on the word of God, that is fresh word from the Holy Spirit giving him to say that right on the spot, right? It's not like we get a script and we, we pretending and writing something where we can come back and do it again. That word that you received was like a one shot deal. We can't do that over, you know? We can't duplicate, we can't duplicate the, the words and the moving of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I think churches miss also today. When you were talking about how the old church had so much power. Because they were relying on the moving of the Holy Spirit at that very moment. They weren't relying on scripts that they typed up to say before a group of people. Amen? Right. And so I, I commend you, you know... Minister Harold Anderson on the fact that you are used by God on the spot. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you right then and there. So I with that, I just want to say when you mentioned about the generals, well, you mentioned actually about the, the, the people of the church, in particular, Paul, when he said, after I leave, things are going to change, the overseers, right? The overseers, the, the overseers, once they leave. And we see today many generals have left. They have transitioned to be with the Lord. And those ravenous wolves that were in their congregation have begun to flock together and change the very doctrine of that house. And so I also talk about the um, equate this with the COVID-19 and the closing of certain churches because God sees that. My generals that I put over those houses that were preaching the uncompromised word of truth, standing on good doctrine, and then it's changed after they transition. He shut them down, you know? Right. So I praise God once again, as always, that some of those houses were shut down because they deserve to be closed. Amen? Right. And as the ones that are opening up right now, I hope they take heed to that time that God shut it down so that they were able to study to show themselves to approve, right? right? To find out where they went off track. Because God is not deceived. He sees everything. So I'm just pointing out all these good points that you said. 
And then when you talked about the women, of course, as a woman of God, God is holding us accountable. You said our children, right? right. If we are not walking in the truth and we don't know the truth, our children are going to suffer. So women of God, I'm talking to you this morning. You, are, you have a, a, a great charge. Raise your children up in the truth of God's word. It's not about, oh, I just believe in God, whoever that may be. No, it was clear by the minister this morning that God must be the father of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There is no other God besides the God of Jesus Christ, our Savior. So if you are one this morning that's preaching the word that says, just as long as you believe in a higher being, right, a God. No, it's not a God. It's the God of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We want to put that out there. And then you spoke by the Holy Spirit talking about Balaam and the donkey. Some of these people are walking into that death angel with that sword. They don't even see it. Their eyes are blinded. Well, guess what? God is not opening donkey's mouth. He's opening our mouth as his ministers to tell you to wake up and see that you're walking in that path. Amen? Amen. The donkey is not telling you. We here telling you this morning. Wake up. Don't continue on that road because you're going to get sliced and end up burning. Amen? For eternity. Eternity. The false prophets. The false prophets that are here. How do you get deceived by a false prophet? You get deceived by a false prophet when you don't know the word for yourself. When you rely on someone else to spoon feed you the word. That's how you get drawn away into these false prophets. So if you want to say, how can I know who these false prophets are? Study your word. Amen? That's how you know. You don't rely. They got to be on point. They got to be on point. You don't rely on them feeding you the word of God. You say, oh, I know what the word says. That's false. So I've turned from that, right? In the name of Jesus. Right. And then this is the last thing I'm going to say before Minister Moses comes up with the salvation prayer. This is the excitement that the word put in me today that you brought forth. Wow. Minister Anderson, I'm telling you, you got me on fire with that word that you said. And like I said, that was not scripted. That was fresh manna from the Holy Spirit. Nothing he said was written down. That was scripture and then God speaking. I love it. I'm excited. Okay, so let me calm down and just say this last thing. When you begin to talk about the sheeps in the wolf clothing, you know I thought about Little Red Riding Hood. And so he's laughing now. It said, um, I, I looked up a piece, it said, this is what the wolf did. He even brushed and curled his hair. And then he set himself in grandma's chair, right? Yeah. So this is what these wolves are doing. They're brushing their hair. They're getting dressed up in the clothing of the true saints of God to fool us. Amen? That's right. And then when we get to see them and we, we um, look at them, this is one little piece. It says, you may see something a little funny about them, and then you question them. And so Little Red Riding Hood, she says, what great big ears you have, Grandma. And what did the wolf say? He said, all the better to hear. So when you begin to question these ravishing wolves, they won't give you a good excuse why they saying what they saying. You understand? But you got to know the truth of God for yourself. They're not saying that to get you into heaven. They're get, saying that to draw you out. out the church. Draw you out of the church of the living God. Draw you away from the truth of his word so that you will spend eternity with him and his angels instead of God. Right. Amen. Yeah. That's good news. Thank you, Minister Anderson. I feel full this morning. That was good. And so now, if you want to experience, hallelujah, eternity with the Father, God the Father of Jesus Christ, Minister Moses Anderson is going to come right now and offer 
the prayer of salvation. Amen. I hope you're excited with that word this morning. God bless you. Here, Minister Moses. Hallelujah. So, that was an important message. Yes. Hallelujah. It's important to know what you hear and what you say. Yes, Jesus. If you would, imagine that there is a, there are two people. Yes. A deceiver mm -hmm. and a Christian. If that person, that deceiver, were to feed that Christian with the wrong word, that's two souls. Yes, Lord. The deceiver is not in line with God. And the Christian is being deceived. Yes. Two does not seem like a big number to some, but God cares about every single soul. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And so a way to help is offering salvation. Amen. This is in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. Yes, Lord. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's for lost souls, Amen. people who don't know Jesus, yes. or people who may have heard of him, but need to establish a connection with him. Yes, Lord. Sorry. Hallelujah. Please remember to subscribe Amen. so that you can hear more from God. Amen. God bless.